Coming up on tonight's broadcast, a compendium of catastrophe as we celebrate some of the most acrimonious altercations caught on tape. From Fijian fisticuffs to Muldoon madness, it's a seriously shocking shambles. From rookie to bishop may sound like a chess move, but that's just what happened to Brian Tamaki, the Kiwi clergy A-lister with good looks, glam, and God on his side. God does choose men, and he puts an authority on their lives, whereby he uses them in a special way. Oh yeah, it's good to be Brian Tamaki. In February, new Bishop Weekly named Brian the hottest new talent on the ecclesiastical scene, making the one-time bushwhacker God's own's most bankable bishop. To celebrate becoming a bishop, Brian took his friends out for a cruise on his ray glass boat. Ouch! That don't look cheap. At 130 grand, it ain't. That's even more than Brian's $80,000 Ford Explorer and $35,000 Harley combined. Brian rides a very powerful Harley Davidson. He loves the idea of immense power because it reminds him of God. Wait, how does a man of God pay for all this? God only knows. But wait, all that tithing can't hurt either. Destiny disciples are tethered to the tithe, paying 10% of their wages to the church. That adds up to a lot of clams. Then there's sales from Brian's best-selling Bible bashing tapes. No wonder Brian likes to live life large. Large men, that is. The Bishop of Bling surrounds himself with at least four big men at all times, according to leading tamacologist Michael Logan. Brian is very security conscious. I mean, you have to be. When the line of succession is God, Jesus Christ, then Brian Tamaki, and you're the only one here on earth, I mean, you've got to keep yourself protected. Whoa, those guys look expensive. That's because they're wearing Destiny men's suits. Brian's own line of designer menswear. Styliness is next to godliness for this to mess and tell evangelist. Brian says, blessed are the sleek for they shall inherit the earth. That explains the jewelry. Is that Rado? The Bible says it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man like Brian to enter the kingdom of God. Hmm, hold that thought. Yeah, people often bring up the camel needle thing. Um, fact is, Brian can afford to buy a really big needle and as many camels as he wants of whatever size. Hmm, good point. <laughs> no doubt about it. It's, it's good, good to, to be. be. Brian Tamaki. He made a declaration that in five years you shall be ruling and reigning in this nation. That means you control the wealth. That means you control the riches. That means you control the politics. That means you control the social order. That means that you are in charge. However, questions remain about the ethics of the calendar. We modeled our calendar on the Sports Illustrated swimsuit calendar. We wanted it to be more than a fetish thing. We were very, very careful about the corpses we used as models. The police were very helpful. But it was not always possible to find and notify the families. Many of the girls could not be identified. Despite its controversial subject, the calendar has been a big seller in Germany. One heart-stopping moment for her supporters. A repeat of Athens seemed to be on the cards as Radcliffe came to a halt at the side of the road. This time, though, it was simply a case of needing to answer the call of nature. And oh, you've got to go on at school time and all, but how are your cats? 
Well, rumour has it very well. I, no, rumour has it not very well at all, unless no, you believe no, no, in the no, afterlife. No, well, well, no, no, rumour has it very well, and the reality is I'm not even interested in getting that debate, because I got... That's it anyway. You, well, you, you've, got, you, hey, no, you've got one side of the story, you keep to that, and you guys... No, are no, I, I, I don't... We up. haven't reported any side of the story. I just want to know why you abandoned your cats. We sold the company for 39 million and there was three three of us in that and it was divided between us and uh, well, that's what still I, 12 odd million dollars uh, no i actually got three million i'm out in the shopping malls again working like i did 20 30 years ago flogging products in the shopping mall do you think i want to do that of course i don't there are very nice things being said by people coming in on the texts about you a lot of support for you yeah I think that's one thing that gets get me going. There are days when, I, obviously, I did not want to stand in the shopping mall. There you go. Look, Suzanne has a heart of gold. We love you to bits. Kia oh. kaha. Go set me off again now. <laughs> you go, girl, in gore. We love you, Lee. Hold your head high, Suzanne. You still have a natural glow. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Those are some of the tips. People are very kind, so you've got to keep going for, you know, for other people as well as yourself. And it's not easy to pick yourself up and start again. It's not easy. And you should know that. Today, I've come to the gallery to find out. I have to admit, at first I was not taken by this work. Oh, I could appreciate its poise and the dignity of its subject. But then I looked closer, and oh... It opened up for me like curtains revealing a stage. Formerly, I'm impressed with the artist's mastery of structure. The Year Awards. To present our next award, meteorologist Augie Auer. And the award for Sickness Beneficiary of the Year goes to... Jared Burgess. Jared became a sickness beneficiary three years ago after he was injured in a speed dating accident. He's the youngest to break the 50k barrier and was also the ACC's highest earner in 2003. Jared Still to come, a celebration of some of the most acrimonious altercations. There's a famous altercation that took place in the halls of Parliament that involved the former Minister of Police, John Banks, and Winston Peters. Peters allegedly roughed up Banks who then went crying to the media. Trouble was, there was no video of the event. But thankfully, the archive is full of other unscripted scuffles and violent vignettes. Our country is a haven, an unspoilt virgin in a world of violent whores. Overseas, violence is everywhere. It can happen to anyone, 
any time, anywhere. Ice hockey is famous for it. Basketballers do it. Even Icelandic pop stars do it. In fact, if you look on the internet these days, it seems that everyone is doing it. Even the kids. This stoush from an Eastern Bloc parliament makes our elected chimps look like front bums. And just like in the sevens, the Fijians are devastating when it comes to an all-out South Pacific punch-up. The match between Naita City playing in the All Black strip and Suva disintegrated into a brawl that initially involved only the teams. They used to say Fiji the way the world should be. But for one insane afternoon, the Friendly Isles became the fucking Violent Isles. It was a car catastrophe that put the bully into Bulavanaka. The game erupts in an unpleasant manner in the centre of the field. It's a sort of thing that's been boiling up for most of this game. But if you thought this sort of thing only happened overseas, then think again. Forget Flanders. It's our rugby fields that have been awash in blood for generations. And Bill Bush joining that one now. These scenes are all the more shocking given the serious tone of our production music. But a funny thing happens when you select comedy as opposed to intense drama. It doesn't seem so bad after all. <laughs> It may not look like a scene of a violent outburst, but back in 1984, Women's Affairs Minister Anne Herkus was manhandled by Christians in a scuffle at this women's forum in Christchurch. I spoke. I moved down from the rostrum towards the men standing, the four men standing at the back of the hall. When I was hit across the breast, struck, and I landed up on the floor. The woman only event proved unpopular with Christians. Was it female violence? Female violence, all right. Female violence, that's for sure. There was a lot of fists and foul mouthed women in there. This man was waiting outside Young's factory. He arrived in this car with a carton of eggs on the dashboard and a Labour Party poster on the side. After a short wait, the Prime Minister arrived. You're finished, Muldoon. You're finished, mate. This is your last gasp. You're gone. The dictatorship is finished, mate. You're gone. No way. No way. You're in New Zealand. Dead correct. The dictator, that'll be another that. Muldoon lashed out at the man's jumper, while children looked on in horror. That man struck me. <laughs> You're typical of the other side. We can do without. Not hard enough. July the 14th. A few days later, Sir Robert lost the election to Longy. 1988 marked the first time a sponge cake was used in anger, in this altercation involving Jim Anderton. Then one man began abusing him. Talk, 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 Anderton, you're all bloody talk! Seconds later, he was showered with cake. The cake itself was said to be fresh, creamy and all jammy. It's all right. <laughs> Richard Preble got an egg in my elected the other night, so... Um... He's a lovable old horn dog now, but back then, Preble was the most hated man in the country. It could easily have been more than just an egg. Even the Queen has had to steer down the barrel of New Zealand's numerous poultry projectiles. This outburst happened at the Ellerslie races. The Toyota Hilux offered little protection from the eggy explosions. Four years later, and Liz faced a t-shirt terror attack at a Waitangi hoot nanny. Royal sources say the Queen was not amused when the t-shirt recently sold on Trade Me for over a thousand dollars. Christmas is supposed to be all about the festive spirit, a time of giving. But what happens when the festive spirit is vodka and the only gift is the gift of Biff? For an answer, we need only to go back to December last year, on this very spot. 
police emergency. Oh, Sergeant Reeves, I'm off duty. I'm in Victoria Street car park at the moment. Just opposite of me is a large group of centres. All drunk. That all put. Believe it or not, this was meant to be a protest about the commercialisation of Christmas. In other parts of the world, Santaki, as it's called, isn't just a drunken brawl of shit-faced Santas. But this is New Zealand. So rather than fighting the corporations, these overactive activists just got twanged and fought each other. And uh, a couple of them have just had a scrap. Um, there's four or five standing around them. Oh, well, here we, here we go again. Someone here, they're going again. Four of them going again. Here come, tell them to turn their sirens off. Everyone will just freaking scatter. They just love it. Ask any victim of crime and they'll tell you, criminals are violent. But sometimes the victims are almost as bad. Just ask this stretch of asphalt. It was the scene of a severe dressing down only last year. In this melee, a former partner of a murdered gang leader lays into one of the men accused of the crime. Last month, scenes of violence erupted outside the High Court as co-accused Michael Bretain and Michael Gould were both acquitted of murder charges. To the night's other big story, and the man who was the face of Christian politics in New Zealand for more than a decade is tonight awaiting sentence on a child sex abuse charge. Graham Capel's dramatic fall from grace was marked by a dramatic fall to the footpath. He was punched Ooh. twice in the face before his lawyer wrestled the man to the ground. Help us turn the tide. Family, justice and choice. But it's not just middle-aged, God-fearing white men. It's also the bloody Maoris. Tame Iti was trying to silence his former friend. He succeeded. Tame Iti lashed out with his tyre in this Tuhoi tussle from 2000. Even Fair Go's got blood on its hands. You remember that two grand you took off me? Oh, no, no, okay, hey, cut it out, cut it out, cut it out. These days, Sean Plunkett keeps out of trouble behind a microphone at National Radio. But back in the day, it was all on for young and old, in this altercation involving a dodgy painter. Go on, f*** off. I'm leaving. Oh. Go on, do it, do it. Go on, go on. Fuck off. Fuck off. We're off the property where I'm private property now. Pack up and leave. That's what I'm doing. Great. Right. Okay. Now just leave it. It seemed bad painting wasn't the only trick Peppy had picked up from the box. Fuck off your camera. This may look like pretentious corporate art, but it's actually a memorial. A memorial to what was surely New Zealand's worst peacetime atrocity. The building behind me used to be the downtown convention centre. Scene of one of the most blistering bust-ups ever caught on tape. Professional boxing's welterweight title fight comes to an end. And the corner of Albert Marchong is thrown in the towel. And then this. Whoa! Totally unnecessary uh, blow there. That punch triggering an all-in brawl outside the ring. And this is just what boxing doesn't need. Well, this is a sad indication of... Uh, what a poor loser can do. Oh, well, you've seen the... Uh, this is why people don't come to uh, boxing anymore. There's a lot of innocent people come for a day out. Still to come, even more mental mellers and shocking scuffles. So, do you mind telling me exactly what the fuck that is? I see. Well, actually I don't. What's it supposed to do?
it's going to replace television, radio, internet, and certain types of pornography. This bit's an empty glad rap roll. Well, it's still in the prototype stage of development, but just use your imagination because nothing quite beats your own imagination. From all of us here at Eating Media Lunch. You are our people tonight. Thanks for watching us. At number 73, the national anthem and lovely Kiwi scenery make a great combo, but it's even better when you add some biff. And referee Walker was punched and kicked. They show Russell Crowe in the black jacket involved in a brawl outside a bar. And this is just what boxing doesn't need. Go, 